it's the what is this called is that wink poppy i was gonna say murder wink poppy murder everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my September wrap-up part 2 for 2020 I read a total of 15 books so I'm actually splitting this up into three parts so like I said this is part 2 with the next five books that I've read this month so without further ado let us get started the first book that I'm going to talk about is Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tulchuk and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars it follows three different teenagers all revolving around each other Wink is the odd girl Girl at the high school. Poppy is the beautiful bully and Midnight is the boy who is stuck between the two and it's like their story. I really liked the writing style of this book. It was very fast-paced and addictive and it allowed me to read the book in one sitting. It is pretty short. For most of the story I honestly had no idea what was going on half of the time because it kind of mixes like magical realism into the story as well but Usually I'm not the biggest fan of not being able to tell what the heck is going on, but it actually brought the story's enjoyment up for me in this one. I really liked trying to figure out who was who based off of the book's tagline, a hero, a villain, and a liar, but who's who. It was really fun trying to figure it out. I thought I had it all figured out, but I definitely liked the ending to this a lot more than what I originally thought it was going to be. I really liked all three of the characters. I listened to it on audiobook, so all of the characters had different voice actors so it was very easy to distinguish between them. I know that a lot of people kind of complain that the voices kind of all mixed together for them but since I listened to the audio it was very easy so I really enjoyed it 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have I really liked it was The Perfect Mother by Amy Malloy and I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows a group of new moms who all gave birth in May so they call themselves the May Mothers and they all live in Brooklyn. All the mothers decide that they need a night on the town so they leave their babies with their significant other. The only thing is is that single mother Winnie is very hesitant to go out because she doesn't have a sitter so the May mothers decide to hire one for her. After a long night out, Winnie returns home only to find her beloved son Midas missing from his crib with the babysitter saying that she had fallen asleep and heard nothing and it's like the story of everybody trying to figure out what happened to Midas. I actually like this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I've been reading a lot of thrillers recently and they all seem to be blending together but this one was very unique and exciting and it ended in a way that I definitely did not see coming. I thought I had it all figured out but then another twist would be thrown into the plot which would change my whole thought process of what was going on. I love how the story jumped from person to person and it really gave a very fast-paced rapid thought process in trying to figure out what happened to Midas. I actually really liked all of the May mothers and what they brought to the group. My favorite was definitely Nell. I think she was just very witty and sarcastic which I love in characters. I also really like Token who is like the token dad of the group. Get it? <laughs> but overall this is a super quick quick, really fun, thrilling read, so I definitely recommend if you're looking for a pretty good thriller. The next book I have is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. The book follows Sydney who has lived in a predominantly black neighborhood for her entire life in Brooklyn. Suddenly the neighborhood is beginning to look very different due to gentrification. Wanting to preserve the history of the neighborhood, her new neighbor Theo offers to help her do some research to start a historical tour. When she begins to notice that more and more of her neighbors are moving out without saying a word, she begins to question what is really going on and it's like the story of that. I was initially really intrigued by this book because I know that Alyssa Cole is a beloved romance novelist so I wanted to see her take on a different genre. The book has been compared to Get Out which I 100% see the similarities in it and I definitely think that that is a good comparison. The book is very thought-provoking because it is 100% something that could definitely happen in real life so it's very scary to think about. I think that the discussions on racism and gentrification were very well done and I think that it's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable which is definitely needed. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Sydney and Theo and how we were able to dive inside Sydney's mind and see how paranoid, rightfully so, that she was and how she didn't trust anybody but then also seeing her begin to trust Theo but also still be slightly suspicious of his motives. 
I ended up only giving it 4 out of 5 stars instead of the full 5 because I felt that the ending was very rushed and I was a little bit unsatisfied with how everything was wrapped up so perfectly. I would have liked to see a different ending, but I still think it was a very enjoyable read, so I definitely think a lot of people should pick this up if they're interested in a thriller by a romance author. The next book I have is The World That We Knew by Alice Hoffman, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this book takes place in Berlin, 1941, when the Nazis are beginning to attack. It follows a mother named Hani who will do anything to protect her little daughter named Leah from the Germans. She seeks the help of Etty, who is a rabbi's daughter, in order to create a golem, which is a magical creature born from clay and water to be shaped like a human in order to protect her daughter. Etty agrees to help and creates Ava in exchange for an escape opportunity for herself and her younger sister. Once Ava is created, she and Leah leave for France in the hopes of staying with family members until it is safe to leave again. But upon arriving, they realize that France isn't safe for Jewish people either, and when they are there, Leah meets Julian and their story of staying alive begins. I really wanted to love this story because it's written by the author of Practical Magic, which is one of my favorite movies. I haven't read the book, so I don't know if it's a good book or not. But in my head, I really wanted to like this book. I unfortunately was not the biggest fan of the story. It follows a lot of many different characters at the same time. I really liked the story that followed Ava because you were able to see her grow into herself and become more human as the story progressed. I also really liked watching Leah grow from a very small child into a 16 year old falling in love. Unfortunately, for me, I was bored for a lot of the story when it dove into the historical aspects of it. I think that's just a me problem though because I'm not the biggest fan of World War II stories in general, so I think a lot of people would really love this story, but for me it just wasn't my thing. So yeah, it was very average for me, 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up is The Queen's Resistance by Rebecca Ross. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It is the sequel to The Queen's Rising, which I read earlier in the year and absolutely loved it, so of course I am a big fan of the second book as well. I honestly think that this duology is completely underrated. I wish more people would read it because it is so freaking good. The book picks up almost immediately where The Queen Rising leaves off, so I don't really want to give a synopsis of it because it would give a lot of spoilers for the first book, but I will say that I loved seeing all the characters that I fell in love with in the first book. Again, the found family that Brianna has found is just so lovable. I was honestly so excited when we got points of views from Cartier and Brianna this time around instead of just Brianna. I really liked how the romance wasn't the big focus of the book and it was more on the resistance and what came from that. I also really loved the introduction of the new character such as Ewan and Neve, I fell in love with them just as much as I fell in love with the original cast. I think that Ewan's and Cartier's relationship was adorable and I loved seeing them interact so I am honestly wishing that another book in this world comes to fruition but I don't know if that's gonna happen but fingers crossed that it does because I love this duology so much. Alright everybody, so those were the next five books. If you're interested in part one, it will be down below. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!